How's it going you guys and welcome back to another video and in this video I'm gonna give you guys five quick tips to help you improve, move faster and save a lot of energy and just overall make them a lot less sucky when it comes to burpees. Now I see the same mistakes happen over and over every single time I teach them so these tips will help you prevent a lot of you know stress, aches, pains uh, and just wasted energy that you'll be spending when you're doing burpees. Now the first thing I want to do whenever we're doing burpees obviously make sure you're pretty warm. Burpees are a very dynamic movement. They require a good amount of energy and uh, mobility to get done so the first thing I recommend is making sure you're always warm so if your workout that you have for the day doesn't already have a warm-up program to do I would just hop on a bike go for a run something for like five to ten minutes to make sure blood is flowing so you feel good so you're not going from just sitting around all day to all of a sudden busting out a huge set of burpees now for your stretches there's three main areas I want to focus on the, uh, those three being the pecs the hamstrings and the calves those ones usually take the most abuse especially for me when it comes to uh, any amount of burpees really so the first pec stretch I like to recommend for people is finding a you know post on the rig or finding a doorway and just simply placing your elbow flat up against that surface with the elbow at a 90 degree angle and then driving your chest forward and then away creating a big uh, amount of tension in your pec but trying to stay passive and relaxed and letting yourself open up so you can spend about a minute or two on each side it usually helps open up the chest a lot especially if you've been sitting around at a desk all day typing away now the second one I like to do is the stationary inchworm so we're not doing a push-up on this one but I do want it to be stationary because I find a lot of people when they do like a moving inchworm is that they don't really get a big hamstring stretch. They kind of just shorten the range of motion and kind of just get through the motion. Whereas I want you to get a big hamstring stretch as soon as you start the movement. So from a standing position, you're gonna walk your hands right next to your feet, walk them all the way out to a push-up position, walk them right next to your feet again and stand up nice and tall. If you're not able to keep your legs straight, that's perfectly fine, but try to keep them straight as much as you can and do walk your hands all the way up to your feet before standing. Don't kind of cut it short and then do like the little uh, and throw yourself up because your hamstrings are so tight. You want that stretch, it's good for you. Next, for the calves, is simply find an elevated surface, whether it be a stack of plates, a bench, whatever really, and then put your toes up on that surface with your heels hanging off and just teeter-totter back and forth stretching out the back of your calves a lot of people do not stretch their calves enough and I highly recommend that stretch now the first tip I want you guys to keep in mind especially I see literally everyone do this their first few times doing burpees is they do a strict push-up when you're doing a burpee I want you to literally flop down flop back up do your jump and clap overhead so when you're doing the burpee, it is not you jumping out to a plank position, slowly lowering yourself down and jumping back up. Literally roll yourself down so your thighs to your core to your chest touches the floor and you come off the same exact way. So then chest, core, and then thighs and you pop yourself back up into the next burpee. After that, we are focusing on landing flat footed. I see almost everyone do this one this mistake as well. People will land on their toes and this is gonna cause a lot of stiffness. It can cause a lot of aches and pains on your ankles down the road and affect a lot of your other lifts as well that require a lot of ankle mobility, whether it be box jumps, whether it be squats, um, running really affects a lot of different things. So whenever you're jumping, make sure you land flat footed and you're not landing on your toes. Now the third one, which can kind of tie into the last one as well, is landing with your feet wider. So if you're someone that does have pretty tight hamstrings and it's hard for you to land with your, your feet flat, land with your feet a little bit wider, maybe outside shoulders width, and that way it's easier for you to get your feet flat on the floor. When you do your little jump and clap overhead, then you can bring your feet a little bit closer. When you go to lay down for your next burpee, feet go out wide again, jump for your burpee, feet come back in. So practice that for a little bit, it helps you a lot. Even if you don't have tight hamstrings, I still recommend that technique because it'll save a lot of extra stress on the hamstrings and make the movement a little less daunting for hamstrings and not blow them up as much. Now for tip number four is I want you guys to spring out of the bottom of your burpee. I see many people when they start to get tired because they have a whole bunch of burpees in their workout is they'll lay on the floor, take a quick 10 second nap and then pop back up. You want to, once you're coming down from that burpee and you have that big tension in your chest and your shoulders, you want to use that moment, that uh, tension inside your chest to spring back up and not lose it at the bottom. So every single time you're doing a burpee, as soon as your chest touches the floor, treat it like a trigger, boom, you pop back up and you do your next burpee. If you need to truly rest in the middle of a set of burpees, either A, think, can you just go slower but still keep that pace going, or B, take a rest at the top of the burpee, maybe walk around, grab a quick sip of water before you start busting out another set of burpees. Do not rest at the bottom, you're losing a lot of natural tension, just spring back up and do your next rep. Now, lastly, 
is treating the burpee like a hinge. It is a lot of hips involved, but we do not want to treat the movement like a squat. I see a lot of people, they kind of squat down. Maybe they do come on their toes again here, which is also another problem, but they'll just shove their knees forward. Once they bring like their chest towards their knees, then they shoot the feet back, then they pop the feet back up and then stand up again. You want to focus on, as soon as your hands are getting close to touching the floor, then you shoot your feet out, shoot your feet back in, and then the hands come off the floor. So focus on that because that'll save, again, a lot of uh, unneeded stress that would have been on your ankles and on your knees as well and just focus on using a lot more of your hips and your hamstrings to get the movement done. So those are my five tips that I highly recommend when it comes to burpees. I personally did a challenge where I did 1600 burpees straight and I used every single one of these to help me uh, get through each individual rep. If I was lacking in any of these, I would have been done for. I was still done for in the middle of it. I was dying, but I highly recommend if you follow all these tips, you're gonna crush the next time you have burpees in your workout. Now, if you guys have any questions or comments or think I might have left any tips out, make sure you leave them down below in the comment section so someone else can find it or I can respond back to any of your questions. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button. It helps us out a ton. If you don't already, follow us on Instagram at Fitness. Subscribe for plenty more, and we'll see you guys in the next video.